Hello, everyone. Thank you for being with me today. You know, we have a lot of press conferences. Some of them have levity. Some of them are very serious. And then there are some that are tragic and horrifically sad. And that's what this one is about today. I'm about to release information to you that probably before I get halfway through this press conference, you will be thinking, why in the world is he saying these horrible things? Well, you need to know. You need to know in the real world when people don't do what's right, really, really, really bad things happen. So we're going to tell you what this child experienced at the hands of their parents because the parents didn't do the right thing. I want to introduce you to the parents, to Keisha Williams, who's 24, and Ephraim Allen, Jr., who's 25. Here's when it all began. In July of 2020, when this beautiful baby boy was only 10 months old, he suffered a near-drowning experience at a short-term rental in the northeast area of the county a near drowning. He toddled off into the pool. There was life-saving efforts to try to save this baby's life. When they got him to the hospital at the conclusion of all of their valiant efforts, the child had no brain activity, could not even blink his eyes, cannot move his extremities, and quite frankly, it was recommended to the parents that he be removed from any life-saving measures because the child would forever be in a coma with no brain activity. They didn't want to do that. So ultimately, these parents were sent home with their infant on a ventilator, a permanent ventilator, with a stomach tube, and health care home health care three times a week. Now that went on for over two years. As of last October, the parents began to reject the home health care. Despite the health care company's best efforts, they would not be home, would not answer the door. So the last time home health care dealt with this child was in October of last year. Understand, all of this was occurring at absolutely no cost to the parents. In fact, the mother was receiving benefits to stay home and take care of this baby. So let's fast forward to Friday, May the 12th. There's a 911 call to the city of Bartow, to the Azalea Apartments, where they live, where the mother said, you know, the child's uh, pulsometer is not working correctly. This is really not an emergency. You don't need red lights and sirens, but we'd like fire to come over and check the baby. So they responded to the house in a normal, routine fashion. And when they arrived, they saw this child hooked up to a ventilator and this ventilator was working appropriately, but there appeared to be no life in the child. This child had an extremely extended stomach, and it was green. This child was rotting in the bed. They rushed this baby to the hospital, where for over an hour, or about an hour, between EMS, fire services, and medical personnel, they tried to save this baby's life. At the hospital, when they started taking off the diapers and the clothes, they noticed ulcers, large gaping wounds through the body down into the muscle. They noticed there was no rectum. There was just a big gaping hole where the intestines and the spinal column 
was visible. They notified the Bartow Police Department, who immediately said, hey, we need the Sheriff's Office to assist us. This is a very complex investigation. So our homicide team responded. We noticed immediately the child smelled of decomposition. We went back to the house where the child laid lifeless as it had for two years and smelled decomposition in the room. The medical doctor at the emergency room said this child has not had the appropriate care for months. The medical examiner at the autopsy said the child had sepsis, bilateral pneumonia, stage five ulcers, obvious not child neglect. So we talked to the parents and we go, what is going on here? They said, well, they didn't want DCF to take their children so they didn't call. But they had tried, they had tried to get more home health care. So we intro introduced ourselves to the potential health care providers and they said, uh-uh, we accepted them. We went there and wanted to see the child. They said, don't wake the child up today. This is just an introduction. And the next time they went, nobody answered the door. So obviously they were trying to create a facade or to say, well, we asked for help. They let this baby rot and die in its bed. I've done this for five decades. I have seen thousands of children abused, hundreds of children murdered at the hands of parents. I have never seen the horror that we saw with this poor child at the hands of these two folks. I talked to all the detectives in the room. Have you ever seen anything like this in your life? No one has. You can't even imagine how horrible the wounds, the ulcers, that this child endured at the hands of these folks. They're charged with aggravated manslaughter among other charges at this time. They were locked up in the county jail with a bond of $100,000. The state attorney's office actually filed direct once we got the initial medical examiner's report. The state attorney's office, Brian Haas, our state attorney, who is simply the very best, is game on every day. And I'm certain if you talk to him, he would be as mortified as we all are that this baby was left in this condition. My job is to protect children, to protect everyone. But my heart is with protecting the very youngest because you see, they have no choice of where they live or what they eat or what they wear or who they associate with. It's up to parents to make the right decisions. And I suggest to you the right decisions haven't been made since this child was 10 months old and suffered a horrible, horrible, horrible tragedy. And then I suggest to you, and this is only supposition on my part, they just got tired of the baby. They just got tired of the intensive care this child needed. And as a result, the child laid there and suffered and suffered and suffered to finally there was no life left in the baby. There's nothing else I can tell you. If you have any questions, there's still nothing else I can tell you. You know what we know. The other children appear to be in good health.
Well, the legal system can only do what the legal can, system can do. But God's not happy. And it'll be up to God past what the legal system can do. But there's no way, there's no way, no ability to imagine the torture this child has endured. The indication to us is the child has been comatose from the very beginning to the point there was no re reaction. The child couldn't even blink his eyes. So I, my prayer would be that the child was in a deep enough state that he wasn't aware that was of what was happening to him. But I don't know that. I would be hesitant to release the DCF information. I think once before they had a, an investigation way back in the day, but nothing significant. Is, is, so is there, is there a chance that these children will be removed? Well, first off, they have to be re they have to be removed because they're in jail, yeah. and ultimately our goal is to send these folks to prison for just as long as we can send them to prison and then from there God's got to take over but it's I've never seen I, I just there's not words to explain this there's not words to describe this you think in this world we live in it's impossible for parents or anyone to treat a child like this. They let this baby lay in that bed and rot to death. All of them. The pictures were horrific. It was even more horrific for my detectives and supervisors who were there and had the horrible stench to go along with it. It is, it is just, there's no words to explain it. And I've seen some really bad stuff in my career. I have never seen anything like this. You will never unsee this. If you live to be 100 years old, you will never unsee this. What do you say to parents out there? I mean, who feel overwhelmed. I mean, this is an extreme case. I, I get that. But what do you say to parents out there who may be feeling overwhelmed, who the child is at a special need, or other very difficult obstacles in life? Well, parents who feel overwhelmed, who have children that are presenting challenges for them, there's help. You only have to reach out. We live in a wonderful state. We live in a wonderful community. We live in a wonderful country. No child has to be left in this condition. No child. And we deal with a lot of death because parents won't take care of children or are negligent. I've never seen anything like this, and this is just my supposition. I told you. They were just tired of the baby. And well, what do we do now? It's bad. We'll see you on the next one. I'll promise you it won't be as bad as this one, no matter how bad it is. Take care.